goal of grassroots radio in national development. My guests are Zane Ibrahim. He's the executive director of Bush Radio in Cape Town, South Africa. And Zane was telling us that he was in exile when Bush Radio was started. Mabalani Mfandizi is the chief executive officer of National Community Radio Forum in Johannesburg, South Africa. And Lynn Wanyeki joins us. Lynn is president of AMARC Africa, the World Association of Community Radio Broadcasters. Before the break, I asked about the importance of community-based radio in changing the national government of South Africa. Lynn, do you have thoughts on that? Well, probably being South African, Zane and Mabalana are in a better position to to answer that particular question. Um, but more generally, I think um, people know about the importance of communication for, in terms of message delivery, um, that you can communicate important de- messages about democracy, about good governance, and so on. Um, but I think the strength of community radio really lies in the fact that it's more than the message, it's the process of communication. And certainly the process of media literacy, of getting people to produce and put out their own information, critique their own situation, put their own solutions forward as a basis for organizing. And I think in that sense, community radio is important, not just in terms of the transition that happened in South Africa, but throughout the continent. I'd like to hear from Zane and Mabalani, get your thoughts on that. First, let's hear from Professor in the Czech Republic. Yes, good evening. Good evening, Professor. What is your question, please? Uh, my question is um, to AMARC. Um, I have heard that you have participants from AMARC in the show. Um, um, my radio station was the first independent broadcasting media in the province of Vojvodina, that's the northern part of Serbia. We have started to bro- broadcast in May 27, 1993, as you already know in the times of the uh, um, wars in Yugoslavia, and we have been the only uh, voice of freedom in this very important area of Serbia, because we have 26 nas- uh, national minorities there. Uh, my radio station uh, still is out uh, of air even now after Milosevic's downfall because uh, new governments uh, are not uh, ready to change the uh, frequency policy, policy of licensing the radio stations. How can we build uh, a new democracy, a new democratic uh, uh, um, uh, relations in Serbia without uh, uh, building the institutions of democracy. And one of the uh, main parts of, of the institutions is independent uh, media. Do you have thoughts on that? I think, I think Len Wanyeki is better suited to answer that question. It's a more Amak question. But I'd like also your thoughts because Bush Radio kind of yeah. got around the rules at the very beginning as well. Lynn, why don't we hear from you? Well, AMARC operates in terms of regions, and there is a section of AMARC that deals with Europe. I know they've been working a lot on advocacy issues, more around, because of the situation of most of the members, less so around very basic freedom of expression issues, which this sounds like, and more so around telecoms and convergence kind of issues. Um, but certainly I think the work of a network like AMAR should be to cater for the situation of all of its members in situations like that, so to deal with very basic lack of access to the frequency plan. And how would somebody organize a, uh, an operation similar to AMAR to deal with broadcasting in other regions of the world? You I are, don't you, think you really... I'm sorry. Sorry? Go ahead. I, d- I, don't, I don't think you really can organize for other people. Um, I think Amherst's strength is that it is a network, it is a membership-driven network, and the plan that it comes up with is dependent on what direction the members think they should take. 
take him in their own political context. Um, but certainly in terms of solidarity, AMARC has a very strong solidarity network that's linked up to the international freedom of um, expression exchange and here in Africa, the MISA exchange. Um, and certainly I know during the whole uh, situation in Yugoslavia, we were supporting the radio station B92 that ended up having to operate in exile as well. Yes, but you cannot limit the the uh, whole license for a while and operated before it was even on the air. Yes. Could you tell us about that? Well, we started out with literally started out with a little ghetto blaster, and people had to learn how to make a radio uh, on the little ghetto blaster, t- uh, editing and everything on that uh, on that ghetto blaster. I've 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 just been to Nigeria. And, and um, similar questions were asked uh, from people from Guinea, people from Sierra Leone. Uh, they they busy trying to to, to, to to get ready to to, to to free the airwaves. And my my advice to them was, uh, instead of uh, uh, fighting the government trying to get a frequency, why don't you learn radio in the meantime? Because what often happens the moment the air this is what happened in South Africa the moment the airwaves opened up. We didn't know how to make radio, and it turned into jukeboxes within no time at all. So I'm saying, while you have one part of the community fighting to free the airwaves, start to make a radio, record them, persuade the state radio station to to give you maybe half an hour a week to start with of your pre-recorded programs. That's how you start. Professor Mila? Yeah, uh, well, um... That's a really good idea. I mean, the situation of not having fully liberalized uh, airwaves is common to many parts of Africa. And many groups that are wanting to do radio do exactly what Zane has said. They set up listening groups that eventually will become the production groups. They exchange their tapes among one another. And that way they're still sharing information that they're using the technology of radio, but just without transmitting. And when the situation, the overall political situation changes, they're actually ready to go. They have programs in place that they've worked mm-hmm. on in these list programs groups. in place, but also yes, production groups that then can say, okay, we'll continue doing a women's show, we'll continue doing a youth show, and so on. Professor Pesic, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, we uh, uh, specifically we need an. Uh, strong solidarity action because, um, for example, uh, today's government in Serbia uh, has declared so-called frequency moratorium. That means all pirate radio stations built by Milosevic regime are still broadcasting. For instance, a radio station with my name uh, organized by the so-called stars of the hate speech in Milosevic regime are now broadcasting in Serbia and government is doing nothing to change the situation. Um, I want to say that I'm a member of AMARC organization and I have sent uh, these kind of the informations to the um, European Center of AMARC. Does anyone have any response for Professor Pesic? that I'll follow up and figure out why um, he's not getting the kind of response he would expect. We we, we had people in Milan, remember, uh, Lynn? We had people Mm. in Milan from the Balkans. Uh, I think Mm. it was Radio B-52, wasn't it? Uh, B-52 or uh, um, so-called uh, Association of the Independent Medias, uh, which is the collective member of uh, AMARC, is uh, uh, um, only one of the members from Balkan. I am uh, the other. I am second member, but I am living in the exile because my situation uh, in uh, um, Vojvodina was much more uh, uh, difficult than B92, which was in the capital. In the capital, uh, you have uh, 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 the uh, um, international uh, medias, you have uh, 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 the embassies. So uh, uh, Milosevic wasn't so, uh, uh, um, how to say, um, so uh, uh, um, cruel in destroying the media, like in my case uh, in Belgrade. Well, it's 
sounds, Professor uh, Pestich. Yes. If you could get in touch, does yes. Lynn, do you sound like you need to? He needs to be in touch and get a better response from Amark. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll definitely get in touch with the European office and just find out exactly what they've received from him and yes. them to follow up for sure. Yes. I can't answer myself because the offices are all fairly autonomous, but yeah. I will. World Association of Community Radio Broadcasters. Zane was just telling us about some of the programming that Bush Radio has or had, and including information about health care and information about politics. Let's hear from our next caller who's joining us.